Anyway, somebody's question is, is it possible to clone fields? And I think the simple answer to that is no. We can prove it by subdividing this plane a bunch of times, making it editable, feeding it a vertex map so we can essentially visualize the field. So uh, point mode selection, set vertex weight, inside of there, turn on fields. So now what do we want to feed it? Well, we want to feed it some cloned fields. So you can imagine right now if I put in a, let's just do a spherical field. It'll visualize really easily. You can see that we've got this nice fall off. I'll shrink it down a bit. Now let's say actually that field will be put into a cloner and you can see it did clone a bunch of them. So essentially we should see one in the center and then a bunch in the corners. So if I said, okay, okay field, don't look at that spherical field, but look at this cloner. Yeah. I'm going to say, see it as a MoGraph object. You see none. It didn't see anything there. And let's try again and say, see it as a point object. And again, we're not seeing anything. And we'll try the final one, which is not going to be anything. And say, see it as a spine object. And again, nothing. Having said that, you do have possibilities, depending on what you want, of building it in a different way. So... So the spherical field didn't work. We couldn't clone that. But you know what we could do? We could, I'll delete the spherical field because it didn't work. But what we could do is say, well, if I were to make a plane and we'll set this to one by one segments and make it really tiny, like one by one. So there's a really, really tiny plane right there, like so tiny. So if I went to this vertex map and said, look at that plane, you're going to see, oh, it kind of looks like a circle field because it's a really tiny plane and every point, so there are four points, they have a radius of 20. So you see, oh, we get this nice circular fall off. Like, that's pretty good. Well, if we clone that, and now we should have one in each of the corners. So you, you can actually see it there, little plane, little plane. And now I say, okay, vertex map, don't look at that plane. Instead, look at this cloner. What do you want to see it as? I want to see it as a point object. Now, we do see all of those individually placed because we're kind of faking it. It's a, it's a completely different process. But... We are now using a cloner to drive where the forces would be. So again, the radius is going to be the radius on all of them. And you're kind of stuck to that. But yeah, that works pretty well. Now let's push it even a step further. Instead of that being a plane, what if we made a end side, essentially a circle, lay it flat on the ground, T for scale, give it a few extra segments. And you see, okay, we got this circle spline. So in the vertex map, I'll say, okay, look at the circle spline. You can see it's going to look like this big twirl. You know, it's kind of, going around, which is cool. Like, it's really nice that that's an option because you can even do things like animate that around. Actually, just as a little side thing, some of this cool is that we can animate this by... Actually, is it built in? Maybe it's under remapping. Curve. Spline offset. Okay, so yeah, you see here's where I get... See how this spins around now? So I think if I set that to a speed... There we go. Look, so... With no keyframes, I now have this infinite spin, and it all was just inside of this spline. So if you go into remap, it's even cool. It shows it here in the uh, graph editor. It looks really nice. But yeah, get that nice spin, and now that's spinning, we do something else with it. Anyway, that's completely beside the point. The reason I was mixed up with a clamp is it's using the curve here, so a near-identical interface. Uh, anyway, that is an end side. But I'm going to say... Don't look at it as a curve. Instead, look at it as, well, you could do a radius, so it would be like a circle around it. And that, again, we could, should be able to throw that into a cloner and say, okay, don't look at your inside. Instead, look at the cloner. Look at it as a spline. And, oh, and it's a new spline. So, again, we have to set that back to radius. But now you see we get indiv individual circles on all of them. So, you know, that works pretty well there. But you could also say, view those as a mask and do it along Y, because that's a projection angle from the top. Um, actually, that one only caught the center one. That's weird. That's very weird. Like, it's only seeing this center one. Um, is it because they're partially outside? No. Okay, well, this is definitely a when in doubt, use a connect object. So if I feed these into a connect, it should be seeing them as a spline. So let me try swapping that. And at the instance I do, now it is seeing it as a spline. For some reason... In the mask mode, it's not seeing individual splines. It was only seeing the one, but yeah, put in a connect object and then we get the circle. And I mean, there's other things you could potentially do. Like you could potentially get like a linear fall offs, maybe. 
Uh, let me show you. If we pull this out, so there's no clones, and I'd like to just see this one spline. I'm going to make that a two-dimensional spline. And you'll see that currently it's viewing... Um, it's viewing this as a mask, which apparently just makes a, you know, a little radius around it, which is pretty cool. Like we can just do a radius around that one, but I guess that's the same as curve radius. But if you change this to a long, you'll see that it actually makes a linear gradient along that range. And you could do things like, uh, the curve, the radius and a long, and now you see it's a fading out thing. So that can be pretty cool if you wanted like this fading out little missile thing flying across. But anyway, uh, keeping it kind of simple. Anyway, the point being is if I say along, this line is now behaving almost exactly like a linear field. Like, you know, before the linear is zero, after the linear is fully there. And we can take that and spin it around, do whatever we want. Now, combining these would, I'm not even sure what it's going to look like. So let's put that into the cloner. And now we got a bunch of them all lined up. If I feed the cloner in, okay, it looks like each one is overriding the previous one. But it's almost like we've got a series of linear fields now. Um, just to see how weird it looks, let's randomize that with a random. And not position, but yes, rotation. Uh, we'll just do a full 360, because who knows what that will look like. So yeah, a bunch of crazy random angles back in the vertex map. And you can see that, yeah, each one is a crazy linear field that like clamps when it hits another one. So all sorts of crazy combinations you could do here. And, I, you know, in theory, let's... To effector to noise and it is animated so yeah those are moving pull it way down let's index them so they're all separate so yeah now we've got like these animated linear fields and i think even the scale would work if we change the scale uh let's just do it uniformly then yeah you can see that some of the gradients will become larger and smaller as they go so that's a pretty cool weird effect um and yeah, all of this is faking fields via splines and points. So you get a lot of options there. So, and actually, we were able to go, I didn't think we'd be able to get a nice linear one, but it actually works pretty well.